Well, hello, friends. This is Kathleen, and I want to welcome you today to the Kathleen Maxwell Ramby podcast. And I am super excited to have um, a friend with me today. I know this is a little deviation to the way I normally do things, but hey, it's a new year and a new time. And so I'm trying some new things. And I have asked my dear friend of the last 13 years, Teresa Morrison, to join me. I'm going to interview her and just we're going to all glean from her wisdom. Um, Goodness, I could say many wonderful things about Teresa. She is a fabulous woman of God. She's been someone that has worked with me along the way during some of the toughest times of my life. And she has a fantastic Facebook group called I Believe, which I'll let her tell you a little bit about that because I would encourage you to join it. She writes inspirational things and puts them up and also just helps us go deeper in our relationship with God. So welcome, Teresa. Hi, Kathleen. Thank you for having me. I'm totally blessed. I I appreciate the invite. Yeah, so tell everybody a little bit about you. Sure thing. I live in New Mexico. I've lived here for 14 years. I moved from beautiful California to the beautiful desert in New Mexico where my husband and I laugh and 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 uh, he says that there's going to be rivers in the desert for us. So it has been that. It's been a beautiful transition. But I'm a wife, a friend, a sister, a daughter. To some, I'm called auntie. I'm also a real estate broker in New Mexico, in addition to having a ministry called I Believe, um, where there's a beautiful community of people. Uh, I just I just love the community. They're from all over the world. I blog, I vlog, I encourage people, and I too interview um, authors, pastors, ministers, um, those that really pour into the community. So thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. I I really appreciate what you do, and I have to attribute just some of the. Uh, different countries that have joined my podcast to you and what you've posted on, I believe. So it's been fun to to partner with you. And uh, so today I want to talk about just how can we come up higher, you know, challenging ourselves to keep growing in the Lord and thinking the way he thinks and seeing things from the way, from his perspective, because I think we, my goodness, there's so many things to distract us right now with our, all that's going on crazy in the world. And so Teresa, tell me, how are some ways that, how are some ways that you do that? Yeah, you know, if I shared a word for today, it would be be still and settled on the inside you know, so today I'm, I'm really prompted to remind the listeners to take time for you. There's honestly a place inside of all of us that needs that stillness where you can just listen and still your, your soul. There's so much, as you mentioned, there's so much going on in the world and we can just be filled with a lot of things. Um, that really boggle us down. And God has called us to live lightly, to live with joy, to live in fullness. And a lot of our heart posture, a lot of the things that we take into our heart, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, there are times that it just gets overloaded. It gets boggled down. And that's what I want to talk to the listeners about today is to just be still and settled on the inside because we're always wanting to make room on the inside for more of what God has to more of what he's saying to us personally during the day. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you, you know, at the beginning of the year, you sit down and say, okay, well, this year I'm going to spend from five to six every morning with the Lord. Well, how many of us know that we start off well and then we kind of dwindle off around February, (laughs) you know? And so my thing is just having spurts during the day and just keeping the Lord in front of you and just stopping and pausing during the day. And I think that really helps us 
to to continually be in communication. You know, Paul talks about praying continually in the spirit and and part of that is really having the Lord on our heart and and interacting with him and just pausing with him. So just finding spurts throughout the day for me, you know, knowing that I'm fully loved, that God is for me, that he's with me, and just reminding myself of who I am during the day um, because I, I'm a realtor, so I have a lot of busy, it's a lot of busyness in my life, so I have to be intentional about pausing, and that really helps. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we can get going so fast at times, uh, just trying to balance different different things. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's you know that's what I that's what I'm passionate about um, with the gathering, bringing God into everyday life, um, which is a Bible study I lead in in person in a couple of towns here in Texas, but um, also you know those are posted on. On the podcast, it's just bringing God into our everyday life, and that mm-hmm. that has been so liberating for me. Is that God wants to be a part of when we go to the gym, when we go to the grocery store, when we are cooking dinner, uh, when we're talking to that friend that needs encouragement. Um, it's not just going to church on Sunday, and um, so I, I just. I love that that is your heart. And, you know, so how do you handle things, Teresa? Okay, say, you know, you just get discouraged. You just get depressed. Um, Something really goes wrong. Mm -hmm. One of your real estate things doesn't (laughs) turn out like you planned. And you spent all this time, you know, and, and they say no. I mean, how do you handle things? How do you th- handle things like that? And so what are your some of your tips? Well, I was just talking to a friend yesterday and I was telling her because she was grasping everything with her fists really tightly. Everything that came her way, she would just grab onto it. And I said, you know, living lightly with the Lord, sometimes it means that whatever he puts in your hands, people, places, things, jobs, finances, all of those things, loose hands with the Lord. So, you know, whatever God puts in your hands, you don't grasp onto it. You, you're you a good steward. We're stewarding yeah. things that God gives us. Sometimes yeah. people come and go in our lives. Sometimes things don't work out in you know, transactions with me and loose hands, loose hands. Okay, Lord, and staying optimistic. Well, this one didn't work out, but, but there's something good coming and our positive confession. And that takes practice. That yeah. just doesn't fall on us. It, it really is. The Bible talks a lot about renewing our minds, renewing our minds. And, and, you know, last year, I remember watching a lot of the news And what happened was the negative news started to really boggle me down. And I caught myself and I realized it. And I started to wean myself away because the balance in my life wasn't right. I had too much negative coming in and not enough positive. And I'm really grateful that the Lord quickens me. And that's one of my prayers. Holy Spirit, quicken me. Make me alive. Cause me to see when I'm not balanced, cause me to see when I'm when I'm ill aligned with you, because, you know, things don't go so well when you're not aligned, or when you're taking in a lot of negativity, and not as much positivity and the pendulum swings. And so does our mind. That is so, so good. And I'm so I'm so glad you've You've, you know, talked about that because I have seen, you know, just some godly people um, really get off track Mm -hmm. because they're filling their minds with all the negativity that's coming in. And you can tell it in their countenance. You can tell it in their interactions. Um, And there's certainly a lot of, you know, COVID numbers on the rise, um, Mm -hmm. inflation going up, um, you know, people getting sick and dying. There's so much of that right now in our world and then the political scene and all of that. 
And I think it is my personal opinion is it is a huge distraction for the body of Christ, because to me, this is our time. Yes, This is our time to make a difference. It's our time to draw people to the hope that we have in Jesus. And um, I think it has really derailed a lot of believers. And I want to encourage just each one listening, you know, to get back on track. And like, like you said, filling your mind with positive things, you know, and that's what's great about I Believe, your group on Facebook um, is, you know, you do put inspirational things there and um, for people all over the world. And I, I love your ministry and that in that way. I just want to really commend you because I think we do need just positive things right now so that we can get back on track and be the hands and feet of Jesus to those around you. And, you know, some of the things um, like in your business, maybe somebody comes and they want to buy a house, but maybe the reason God brought them into your life is so you can speak life to them and love them just like he does and Mm -hmm. show them a better way. That's right. And what you were just saying is, is really true. And, you know, I know a lot of people that are listening on this podcast right now may not be from the U.S., may not be from America, but it's, it is um, worldwide. But yeah. one of the things that we need to remember is that we're not of this world. Our kingdom right. is not of this world. And we have to realign ourselves with what does that look like? And where is my mind right now? Because we could have really low level, and I'm guilty of it, we could have very low level thinking that we are of this world and we start to uh, walk as people that don't know the Lord, you know, and worry starts to set in and fear begins to control the way we're thinking. And that's one of the clues that we are out of alignment because we're not of this world We have a heavenly mindset. We have a heavenly father that even counts the hairs on our head. I mean, he knows us. He knows what's going on. He's not turning a blind eye. He's not silent. And actually, a a, a lot of what I'm hearing in the prophetic world is that God is working. He's working behind the scenes. And we know that. We know that God is, is working behind the scenes, the things that we cannot see. He allows in his wisdom what he could easily prevent by his power. Um, a great quote from Graham Cook. And, you know, we have to just be in alignment in faith and trust and just know that he's going to work all things for good to those who love him and who are called according to his purposes. And that's us. That's, that's all of us. Right. You know, one of the things I've seen, and I don't know, um, you're in a different state, uh, which I had the fabulous opportunity of coming (laughs) out and seeing you in New Mexico, uh, in October at the balloon festival. Um, but you're in a you're in a, a little bit different place. But do you see people? Because I've seen it here in Texas, um, and I I do correspond with people in different in different uh, states and even around the world. People will email me or or want to visit or want prayer or whatever. Um, but I see people almost developing a victim mentality that we're victims of the government. We're victims of, you know, the virus. We're victims of this, that, and the other. What would you say to people that feel or have that kind of victim mentality? Um, because I, I don't think it's from God. <laughs> Right. And like I said, this is our time to shine. But what, what somebody that's feeling like a victim, oh my gosh, you know. Yeah. What? Do you know, that what? is that is really a clue. When we start, we have to ask the Holy Spirit to quicken us and to really, really cause me to see when I'm ill aligned with you. Because that kind of thinking and and words that come out of our mouth is not true. It, it, it's not the truth. And, you know, Philippians 4, 8 says that to think on the things that are true, you know, what is true? What is noble? What is right? What is pure? What is lovely? What is admirable? 
anything that is excellent or praiseworthy, we are to think on those things. And so it's really important for us to think on those things. And, and when we start to think that we're less than that um, a victim mentality, then we are thinking like widows and not like brides. You yeah. know, God truly, truly knows where we are. And um, he has everything taken care of. And he has our lives taken care of. He loves us. And we put our lives in his hands, not once. You know, um, you know, I hear a lot of people say, well, I gave my life to the Lord when I was six years old. I've given my life to the Lord over <laughs> and over and over and over. Loose hands when I'm starting to clinch hands with things that he puts in them. Um, and, and, and truly we, we are, we are loved. There's nothing that we can do or say that could make him love us more or less. He loves us fully. We are fully loved 100%. And those are the things that we meditate on. Who am I during this time? And who is God for me during this time of a global pandemic? What is the yeah. opportunity for, for me to come up higher in my thinking and follow yeah. the Holy Spirit's lead, follow his lead and, and make sure to just enjoy yourself, laugh, put on funny things. You know, I like to laugh. I mean, yeah. lifeness, laughter means that uh, it's good medicine, the Bible says, but it also keeps me light. It keeps me traveling light when I begin to, to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And we sure had our share of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. my gosh. I think I hurt some days because we laughed and uh, we were like giddy little girls when we all got together and just looking at them. Um, <laughs> just so, uh, at such a time when I felt like being out at the Bloom Festival, you know, childlike wonder. Yeah. And that's how God wants us to be. It's just childlike. And what are you going to do? This is amazing. <laughs> and so many times in life, you know, life doesn't feel amazing mm. um, for sure. But, you know, one of the things that I think we all have to do is take our responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's not anybody else's responsibility to make you happy. Right. And you know, when we get angry, when we get down, we have to take responsibility mm -hmm. for our actions and our attitudes. And that's what you're saying is we got to take back our responsibility right. and, you know, eh, goodness, buck up for a sense, in a sense, because there is so God is with us yeah. in every situation that we face. Mm -hmm. And I have to wonder what he's trying to do in the body of Christ to equip us for these days. And that's where we can find joy. We can find purpose in life. You know? Um, yeah. I think that God has already equipped us. We need to tap into that because yep. he's given us scripture. He's given us his word. He's given us promises and we really need to tap into it because it's inside of us. You know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will remind us of things that we need to be reminded of. So we, all of us have one of those, you know, from the 70s and 80s, one of those Rolodexes on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> and the oh, Holy yeah. Spirit pulls out those little cards and reminds us of scripture, reminds us of our promises. So we are well equipped and we have to have a mindset of fullness, not measure, of abundance, not lack. And so in order for us to do that, we really need to, to realize that, God, you've given me everything that I need for this life. You know, right. and 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 um, that's why we pull out our promises, not only at the beginning of the year when it's time to make resolutions, we pull out our promises and we speak them over our lives. We speak them out loud because our heart needs to hear what our mouth yeah. is confessing. Our heart mm -hmm. needs to hear what is true, what is noble, what is good. You know, those those types of things and to speak it out. And at first it seems silly. 
you know, at first it seems silly to begin to speak things out and, but we truly need to know who we are in Christ and who God is for us. It's the most important thing in our lives is, is how we see God and how, knowing how he sees us. And I'll give you a real quick story. Um, People, you know, you get really good clues on how God sees you is when people tell you, like people would tell me, Teresa, you're so kind. And I didn't just hear it from one person. I would hear that a lot. And so I thought to myself, I am, you know, because to me, I'm feisty, right? <laughs> I think you're very kind. No, I've so, always seen that in you. So then I sat with the Lord and, and I'm just like, Lord, people are saying this and and I could just I could just sense the Lord impressing on my heart. You're kind. You are kind. You've experienced the kindness of me in your life. And 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 you're and that's how I know God. He's kind. He's yeah. been if I can describe God, he's been so kind to me. And that yeah. character of the Lord somehow got on me. And people can see that. So when people say, gosh, you're really patient or you're really kind or take note of that because that's how people are perceiving you. And if you hear it once, you hear it twice, you hear it three times. It's a it's a good clue that God wants you to know how he sees you, that you're kind and, and or you're gentle. And even if you don't see yourself like that, you need to step into that and own it. So now I say, yes, I am kind. I'm yeah. kind. I'm gentle. I'm kind. Because I know the person. I know the Lord who, that's been kind to me in my life. And so it's it's rubbed off. So, yeah. Yeah. No, and I love that. Um, I love what you said about that. Because, you know, for me, if I hear something once, okay. Yeah. If I hear something too, the second time, then I'm like, Mm, okay, take notes. When I hear something the third time, that's a real clue for me. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. Yeah. All right, Lord, this is what's on your heart. This is what you're saying. Yeah. Um, this is what, you know, like you said, really coming into agreement with the Lord. And what I love about what you said there too, and it's a good admonition for all of us, is as believers right now, when we run into one another, we need to be encouragers. Mm-hmm. We need to be cheering one another on because um, life is tough. We need to be pointing out the attributes of God that we see in that person. And it's not just, and you were talking about how your heart needs to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just a name it and claim it, you know, that was popular years ago. Your heart needs to hear it. And so there's something about speaking that out. I know, you know, one of the things we did together, and I used to send my work into you, uh, was our identity statements. Mm -hmm. And that was you, you taught us how to sit and learn and develop identity statements. And those were how God sees us. But then there was also that encouragement to declare it and to speak it out. And I know for me, when hard times hit, when I get discouraged, I go back and pull out my identity statements. Um, When I feel I'm going into a new season, I ask the Lord for a new identity statement, Uh, you know, because it just keeps me on, on track and on target and helps me like we talked about in the beginning, um, come up higher, higher from our earthly thinking. Absolutely. And for those of you that are listening, if you want to learn how to distill and how to actually come into your identity, your I am statements like Kathleen is talking about, Alison Bown has some really good books and um, I will definitely post them on the I Believe after I post this, uh, just as a reminder that she teaches um, how to extract, how to know who you are in Christ, write them down, 
and distill them into bullet points so that you know who you are. I mean, you're not going to remember a sentence, but you'll remember a tagline. And we learned how to distill them. And so I, I really want to mention Alison Bound. Just Google her. You'll find um, her books there. So, Right. Fabulous friend. I think that's joyful intentionality, isn't it? That's I think cor that's correct. Mm -hmm. That's available on Amazon. Um, yeah. And she, she's a great, she's a great writer and a woman of a lot of wisdom. Um, so yeah, you might check out her, her book with that. So um, as we wrap up, is there anything closing you'd like to say before I, I uh, in this little fun adventure we've been on today? <laughs> as we, as you were patient while I was going through technical difficulties. Uh, you know, I just want to leave with the listeners to, you know, Jesus paid a tremendous price for us to live life and life more abundantly. And so, you know, we're the great inspectors of our own life and, and, uh, and we don't want deferred maintenance in our life. We want, we want this house to be, you know, in order and, and just, it gets messy, of course, but live life to your fullest, you know, just that's what Christ paid for. Even during this time uh, that we're in right now, it's not going to be forever, you know. Um, it's right. God has God has so much in store for us as believers because when things get dark, guess what? We we light up. We light up. Yeah. And so I just want to bless everybody and just laugh, enjoy your life, live lightly, take times of the day to just pause with the Lord. And, and just enjoy your life because he paid a tremendous price for us. And Kathleen, thank you for having me today on your podcast. It's an honor. Oh, well, I am, I am excited to you. Are, uh, you're, you're my first one. And so <laughs> I am so excited. I want to interview other people and just bring their wisdom in. And um, as we wrap things up today, um, Go to the I Believe on Facebook and join the group. Let me encourage you to do that because if you are a Facebooker, it'll give you encouragement and good things to look at. If you want more information about me, and I would encourage any listeners, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, you can do that. You can access my podcast. I write newspaper articles, and that's at www.kathleenmaxwellramby. Dot com, And um, so you can Google that and pull that up and, and like that. Also, my book, Driving Through Seasons of Grief, is available there. And um, so I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Teresa, for your time and all your energy and for sharing your wisdom with us. I'll definitely have you back. Thank you.